Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, uh, legal and government correspondent, and our guest today is Randy Morissette, incumbent council person for Hudson City Council. Thank you, Jamie, for having me. You bet, Randy. So, uh, you, when it comes to incumbent, you're the most incumbent, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Hopefully not recumbent, but uh, yeah, you have been on the uh, council since when? 2006. I was appointed. So you were appointed in 06, and that meant you faced election the next April in 07. And since this is 2019, my math tells me 12 years, six two-year terms. Correct. And you're going for number seven. Yep. All right. Before I ask you why in the world you'd want to do that, uh, tell me a little bit about what do you do for a day job besides working on the council? Sure. Thank you. Um, I have... I've been in the hospitality business now for almost 30 years, and currently I am the general manager of the Comfort Suites here in Hudson. Uh, I'm born and raised in Hudson, a li lifelong resident. I'm raising my kids here, are now 20 and 16. Me and my wife, we live over on 7th Street, and we, uh, uh, we just love Hudson. I mean, Now, your district is District 1. Correct. correct. And so... Um, I've always wondered at City Council, do you sit at the same chair and is it based on the number of your district? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, all right. around the table. Right. And six members, uh, which means if there's a 3-3 vote, then the mayor votes. Right. Otherwise, if it's a vote that requires four, it's got to be 4-2. Yes. Okay. Now, so you've seen a lot of issues going on in the last 13 years. Um, which, what ones would you say uh, would then maybe the, what stands out maybe most memorable? Uh, the, the one that you could probably relate to is the school when they were looking to put the uh, high school on the other side of uh, Carmichael, on the south end of Carmichael. That was a contentious issue. Um, the other one is, quite frankly, the EMS right now. I've, I've not seen it as contentious as this one. So you would say that the EMS issue right now is more than what that yeah. placing the high school at the old dog track? Yeah, because there's more, much like the high school issue, people's emotions, their kids are involved. And as far as the ambulance is concerned, the EMS, that's people's lives. You right. know, and people, Talking about jobs correct. and then the perception of the response times. Now, we'll get into sure. maybe that EMS thing a little bit, but... Why do you want to have a seventh term? I, I understand wanting to run in the first place because you said, you know, politics and getting the taste of maybe some of the divisiveness from the dog truck. Now that's going back longer years. That's yeah. like 25 right. years. But right. um, so why a seventh term? I have unfinished things I want to see completed, which I started. I grew up, my dad was a police officer in, in Hudson for 25 years. My mom was a business owner, uh, manager for many years in town and they gave back to the community and they instilled that in me. Um, some of the proudest things I am is about supporting the police department, the fire department, the EMS and supporting it in the fact that right now we finally bonded the other night for a new fire station public safety building. Right. I'm excited to see that. It's a long time overdue and so that is one big issue that we can give back to the community knowing that we've put the fire department in a up state of the art facility in a centralized location. I think that's pretty key centralized because the city has grown quite a bit to the south. It's going to grow even more now that this most recently rezoned area is going to have more residential on the south end of town. Right. So you feel pretty good about that where the proposed location for the fire station? Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't wasn't exactly the uh, the report we had done, the study, wasn't the first choice, but it was the second choice. Okay. And obviously the first choice was not available, so... We oh, I was curious. I, I, not being a city resident, I didn't hear, but what was the first choice? Uh, over uh, by Vine and Carmichael at some one of those oh, sure. access points. And right now, I mean, there's 40 acres at Vine and Carmichael that's still township. Yep, exactly. So, okay. Well, um, you already mentioned lifelong resident of Hudson, mm -hmm. right? So you've had an opportunity with that history to see some of the issues, the ebb and flow of things. Let's start right out with EMS issue. Uh, there's some, uh, we've already had one interview and I have a council member who's very um, decided already on where she stands. How, where are you at on that? Well, I support the EMS. There's one thing, it's a local 
emotional issue. Um, we have to make the best decision and what my constituents will tell me is whether or not I should support staying with St. Croix EMS or going to a different provider. As a businessman for thir almost 30 years, it doesn't make sense if you look at the performer or the profit and loss statement to continue down a road which will never make any money and that's not my goal to make money with EMS. But it is to run a, a you know at least a balanced business model. Right. Right now it is not that. Um, there's a lot of money going into that. For one, you know, I can't justify an 85% increase to make it work and pass that on to our citizens. And that's what it would take. Right. And is that number going up now that we've got some of the surrounding municipalities moving Correct. to Lakeview? Correct. It goes up. So, and as, as you're well aware, the levy limits were up. And Hudson's been fortunate enough. We have a great bond rating, but state shared revenue, the levy limit issue, we're coming up to the, the wall. And we have to make some tough decisions. This is an emotional issue for folks, and, and I certainly understand that. But we also have to be smart about what we're, our fiduciary responsibility to the citizens. If they want us to raise taxes, then that's a different, different uh, conversation altogether. But we have to be smart with their monies. Sure. We have to make a smart decision as a business plan and be successful without jeopardizing people's lives. Because basically it comes down to safety. And I've been the public safety chair, but I think maybe going on almost six years. Okay. So it's, it's a passion of mine to make sure we're doing the right thing. Do I have all the answers? Absolutely not. Are the, the, are the uh, proposals that are in front of us, are they the right answers? We don't know. We're trying, it's a passionate issue, so we're trying to find common sense needs to come into the play. And we have to, we have to talk with one another and, and fend, you know, go and through you it. You made a comment, Randy, about, you know, if the citizens want their taxes raised to be able to get that, well, that's one thing. Um, is this something that would be put, should be put to a referendum? You know, we're elected to make those tough decisions. I, I don't necessarily agree with uh, a referendum because we were elected to make that decision. Right. There's ways to communicate with us what the desire uh, is sure. of the majority of the It's city. not like you're, again, building a new high school or <laughs> adding on to the high school, being able to make that decision by yourself. That is something that is of huge magnitude. Um, so, well, I, I appreciate uh, your answer on that one, and I'll let that stand. Um, so let me, let me say one thing. I just, I really have not made a final decision yet. On how on which way to go with the MS. Okay, all right, and there is the next meeting on that's like March 11th. March 11th. March 11th. Will that necessarily be the meeting? Because potentially, potentially, it is up on the agenda. There's an ad hoc meeting at four o'clock, which the public is invited, and we encourage the public to come and express their opinion. And then it is also at the council agenda at seven. Okay, so public comment better time would be the four o'clock meeting. Yes. Okay, got it. Um, how about, uh, speaking of public works, um, let's go to a fire station. Now, public safety. Okay, public safety. Well, public safety is fire station. Public works would be the parking, right? Yes. Um, and Vine Street. Yeah. So which one do you want to tackle first? Uh, Vine Street, I'm glad we're doing. We, we just need to finish that project. Right. And I was uh, very vocal about making sure we have the proper intersection uh, at Wisconsin and Vine for the high school, because we don't know the potential that that year the school will have now to bring in more events, more people. So we're going to go ahead and stub that out for uh, traffic control lights, and we're going to do some configuring up there for okay. straight through and turns. And we're, no we're, roundabout there. No. Okay. <laughs> no. That's very definitive. <laughs> but yes, I think uh, well, people would appreciate. Um, it, it is at the high school, it's just a couple times a day Correct. for its real peak usage and to justify that expense. But in the end, um, yeah, we're looking, it is a public facility and it's mm -hmm. something that is kind of the center of the town. And Vine Street is a, just the main artery to be able to get from one right side much. of the town to the other. So. so I'm very glad we're finishing that 
All right. Red Vine Street. Moving from Vine Street then to parking. Wonderful. Parking has been an issue for almost, we. I just came from a meeting today, just an hour ago. 22 years it's been being talked about, probably longer. Um, I was asked by the mayor and the council charged me as the chairman of the public safety to go ahead and tackle the, the parking question. Little bits and pieces have come out. We have now purchased and identified uh, places where we're going to put single pull stations. What we're doing what, is we that? single pay stations, excuse okay. me, so you can pay with credit card or change. Gotcha. So what we're doing is we're going to redo the parking system we have, enforce it, uh, enforce it. Uh, in, Longer hours. Correct. Okay. Expand the hours to maybe correct we're eight doing, or nine at night. We're doing away with the old coin operated right meters. It, well, it, we we were, they break down and you know. What, it was up as high as 20%, right, that right. weren't working? So Right. So we're investing in that. We've done a little tweaking. The final numbers as far as rates and, and, and the cost per hour are not finalized yet. But what we're looking to do is pay this off. We're putting in a, quite a bit of investment in here to pay it off in three years. So what we're doing to try to gain a little bit more money so we can acquire maybe surface lots, um, you know, buildings around town to, to increase our parking. What about a parking ramp? I'm not in favor of a parking ramp. Perfect example is the Stillwater parking ramp. You can ask anybody who goes to Stillwater if they use that. Most of them don't. I'm not even sure where is that. Is it's it? up behind the Lowell. Oh, okay. They spent five million dollars and it sits empty. Okay. I'm, I, I'm convinced that we might have, there is high peak parking issues. I get that. Right. And hopefully a new parking system will alleviate that. In that new parking system and updating the technology, um, it, part of that peak parking um, problem, could that be addressed by maybe variable rates so that during those peak times you charge maybe double for the parking? Possibly. But that, I, I don't know. The new system is very dynamic is what we've been told. Right. So there's a lot of different things we can do with it because it's computer-based and we can configure all sorts of different things. What we're running into is the reconstruction of Highway 35 in 2021. So right. we're trying to implement this come April, May, when we have... Get it in before that. Correct. But, um, yeah, what I've heard some people say, we don't have a parking issue in downtown Hudson. We have a walking issue. It's just a matter of Sounds how Sounds like you you've been walk. talking to me. I've said that many, many, many times over. Right. You know, there is some of that. People yeah. want to park right in front of the building. And we're disadvantaged in, in a way by our great asset we have, which is the river. Yep. And, you know, we have that. So that's half one side of the entire downtown that can't park on. Correct. Um, so anyway, if we it's you got to balance different things. But at this point, a parking ramp, you'd say less than 50 50 as yeah. far as being in, in the works. But uh, it's, again, one of those things, if it was ever incorporated, where it has success is if you have the, that being a cheaper place to park, mm -hmm. it tends to get or a private usage. developer, right? Or private developer, or combine. You know, that's the thing is, what's the plan if the fire station is going to be up, moved up uh, on the hill? What's going to happen to the old? We don't know. No one's made that decision yet. But is that part of the new TIF? Or it is. Downtown? So there is some possibilities there, but you know, we haven't, we haven't. We're, it's so too early to get into that. Okay. But that is an opportunity. All right. Well, speaking of planning and where things go, um, and speaking with uh, Joyce Hall, who's also running unopposed in her district, District 6, just as you're running unopposed in District 1, the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, this is a process that, having been on the board for more than 10 years, because it's redone every 10 years. Mm -hmm. I said board, I meant council. Uh, you've been through the process already. And you've also been to many hearings and times when the comprehensive plan has been amended mm -hmm. to fit situations. So where do we stand for this coming 2019 look at the comprehensive plan? It's, it's, a, it, it's always been and it will be a living, breathing document. There, we need to be open to, to tweaking or changing it when we have to. That being said, we also need to be cognizant of our development in which directions we can go and we're coming to some limits in the city as far as what can be built, where can be built. We don't really have much more land left unless it's asked to be annexed in. So our growth needs to be, I think, more, uh, more watched, if that's even a, 
mm-hmm. concept. You know, controlled growth. You've probably heard that many times over. Slow it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Make sure we're doing it the right well, way. Well, first thing, because um, I've heard that the third and most recent industrial park is full. Mm-hmm. So where do new businesses go? Shouldn't we have a fourth park so that we have some capacity in that regard? Absolutely, do offset some tax base. I agree with that, but we need to make sure we're putting it in the right spot and putting and bringing in the right businesses. Um, it is. It's not full out at the Synchrony Meadows. Okay. Um, there is still the 22 acres and the old golf course property. So there, and then now the Atwood property, which will hopefully be coming in line in Great. the next next few months or so. Okay. There is opportunity, but we need to be smart about it. We've always been, done a good job of trying to. How, how about the east side of Carmichael? The east, I have not heard anything running right now. And the big part of that is because of the reconstruction of the Carmichael interchange. I was going to say, all the uncertainty with what it's projected for 2021 right. there at uh, what would be exit two, then that's the northeast corner. Correct. Okay. And there's just, the, the, the plans have been revisited and they're being revisited again. So we don't know what the ultimate final plan is going to look like. And then it right. has to come back to us to decide what's best for the city. Well, you mentioned about controlled growth. You like to see some planned growth that's, you know, makes sense, common mm-hmm. sense, and everything. But Hudson, because of the way that you know, we were discussing off camera a little bit of what maybe what our forefathers or a couple generations back could have or would have or should have done, um, the city though is it kind of goes where the demand is, and clearly we have Heritage Green and that area that's you now the southeast part. It's jumped the interstate and jumped Carmichael down there. Um, uh, would you be something, and I know you have to wait until you see the proposal, but um, necessarily opposed to it going to exit four with city limits? The city, you have to, it's a wait and see. You know, I, I, I don't want to speculate on anything that would potentially go out there or be that. It, mm-hmm. We haven't seen a plan. You know, we've all heard about the Walmart wanting to be on the corner, of the what, the southeast, northeast yep. corner of, on Carmichael. Right, but you're talking back over... I'm talking, yeah, redoing that whole frontage road that then connects where uh, Bethel line. Lutheran is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Highlands. that's where I'm talking. Yeah, and then out that mm-hmm. way. Because we already have little strip mall that's there, but there's still a lot of potential for... We just got to be smart about yeah. it. You know, make some good decisions. We, You know, it's congested all over. One of the big things, and I, we didn't talk about this off camera, is that the 11th Street Bridge has got to get widened, and I have been bringing that up for the last four years, and now I think we're trying to get starting to get some traction with it. Mm-hmm. We, it's too congested up there, and it's only going to get worse because there's only two points besides Exit 4 to get right. across the highway. Yep. So that's, that's one of the big other projects that's hopefully coming down the pipe. But if we do it right, slow it down, take a look at it. I'm not opposed to it. I've never been opposed to any growth in the city, but we just got to slow down, make sure we're, it's the right fit. All right. Now, any other issues that we didn't uh, cover? Other, but you mentioned unfinished business. I'm looking at it from what have you seen as the biggest change? You're being the most senior council member, um, 13 years. What's the biggest change in that well, 13 uh, years? Next to the... Uh, the congestion and so many people in Hudson now, the biggest change I think is the, <laughs> is the dialogue that's taken place and the disrespect that comes with being what, on the council. It, it, it's a love and hate thing. People are what I've been calling mean-spirited more so than they've ever been, mm-hmm. and they're disrespectful. Yeah, you mentioned dialogue and maybe the lack thereof. We don't have a lot of people listening. We've got a lot of people talking and saying what they want, but... And it's okay to disagree, but, you know, respect each other's opinion. And, and it doesn't have to be that I hate you because I don't agree with your opinion. Agree to disagree. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. People, uh, I have a psychology degree. I used to counsel people, juvenile delinquents, but nevertheless. Yeah. It's about being a common sense approach and being uh, huma- human, you know, interact with each other. Have a good conversation, educated conversation, and make good decisions on based on common sense. Okay. Well, if I'll leave with the, the final thing was the, the fiscal issues, because you mentioned how 
uh, you're proud of the fact that you bonded now for um, the fire station. Mm -hmm. And um, we're looking at, uh, you know, running up against levy limits possibly. Well, let me tell you, the fiscal, uh, Hudson, we have done, and people before me have done an excellent job being very conservative about our, our finances in Hudson. We are uh, situated very well with a, uh, I think it's a bond rating of, uh, was it uh, two? Okay. With uh, Moody's. And it's so important that we actually have the leverage and the buying power. And we've been good stewards with city taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. We have the money and we've kept our mill rates and stuff in check. And I think we've done a really good job. The operational budgets for our departments are as pretty thin as you can get. Right. It's the bonding and the, the, the other stuff that we have to be smart about. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I've, when I've interviewed candidates before, especially challengers, they always want to talk about the waste in government and we got to cut uh, the duplication of services and all the waste. Do you see any of that here no. at the city level? No, in the 12, 13 years I've been here, we've, it's been thin for those, for departments all along. Even when the bad times in 2008 hit, we asked our department heads to do some tough things. Uh, the council had to make tough decisions, but it put us in a position where we weathered that storm and we continue to be strong as Moody's is telling us we are. Right. Because we're conservative, we've taken the approach of is it a need, is it a want, and being smart about people's money. Hudson is in a, is in a very unique position if you look at all the other communities around. And, and it's getting a lot of great publicity. So um, tourism is obviously yeah. up and Hudson gets on Discover Wisconsin, some of these other uh, statewide shows. So um, we appreciate your leadership and your work on the council. Thank you, sir. And thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, good luck in the, in the race, I, uh, running unopposed. Well, I never take things for granted. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing your views. And thank you for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson. Keep watching.